For news and opinion that you won't find on Fox or MSNBC, check out America's Survival TV on Roku, in the channel store under News and Weather, or on the Roku website, use access code USA123, or on YouTube at the USA Survival Channel, America's Survival TV on Roku. Radio for Readers Bookmark This is Bookmark. I'm Mark Furnier. The nation's top authors are coming up next. Bookmark. Our good friend Brad Meltzer is back with History Decoded, the 10 Greatest Conspiracies. Back to be with us on the Bookmark program. Hi again, Brad. How are you? Good to see you, Mark. How's everything? Good, thank you. Uh, For you, history and life continues to move right along. I got to tell you, you're a great writer and you package your books really well. I appreciate it. Now, full credit here, uh, Workman Publishing, who did it, Peter Workman, who passed away, the head of Workman uh, in charge of the entire publishing company. Full credit to them. Uh, We said, you know, we wanted to do this book, and they said we could do it like a pop-out book where you can actually pull the real, not just count down the top 10 conspiracies throughout history, but where what you could do is physically pull them out of the book. So when you get to the chapter on uh, on Lincoln's assassination, you pull out the letter that John Wilkes Booth actually left behind to kill Lincoln. When you get to the UFO chapter, you pull out the document uh, that the government used to send you when you saw a UFO. And when you get to JFK's chapter, you pull out JFK's death certificate, it comes out of the book. And I love giving a good holiday present but when I can give my father-in-law JFK's death certificate, <laughs> I, I, I win Christmas and Hanukkah that year, right? I mean, that's it. That, to me, is the great present to give. So full credit to them for making it happen. What's your favorite conspiracy in the book? Um, you know, I have two. Uh, one of them is the Lincoln assassination, just because it was the first one I really ever tackled myself. Because a couple years ago, a guy, uh, a lawyer approaches me. He says, I represent the family of John Wilkes Booth. Famously shoots Abraham Lincoln. Wow. Twelve days later, dies in a barn. And he says, the family says that he didn't die in the barn that day. And here's what happened, Brad. He escaped, he got away, he took on a new identity, and he's not the one buried in the coffin. Would you like to hear their story? Yes, I want to hear that story. And so I always have a love for that story. And you'll see all the evidence and the things that they gave us in the book. Um, but of course, my favorite is, is JFK. Um, if we're counting down the top 10 conspiracies throughout history, nothing beats JFK. There's no, nothing that packs more crazy into it uh, packs more uh, paranoia into it. And it's the reason why, I mean, on my Facebook page and on Twitter, the number one thing people were asking me for years is, when are you going to do JFK? And so we had to do it. It is the single bullet theory that you subscribe to? You know what? My theory is, uh, you know, again, here's how I see it. Uh, I believe that Lee Harvey Oswald, without question, shot this man. The, there are good questions to ask and ridiculous questions to ask about what happened after that, okay? The good questions to ask, uh, you know, to me, going and saying, you know, some guy just said, you know, LBJ did it and this one did it. And someone just told me that the the Secret Service agent driving the car did it. You'd think that in the Zapruder film, we would notice the guy who turns around <laughs> as he's driving and pulls the gun. Um, what I think, those are the questions that distract us. Okay. Because they, they, just, they just keep asking the most, they get crazier and crazier as time goes on. The questions that are worth asking or how does Jack Ruby get past a room of police officers that are supposedly guarding the most wanted man in America? And you have a section on Ruby in of this Of course, book. we do a full section on you know, What we did with the JFK chapter is let's really break it down and find the facts and separate them from the myths. Because what happens is, is and I, for me, the movie JFK by Oliver Stone, I remember watching that movie and going, my goodness, he, Oliver Stone is telling me that no one has been able to recreate the shot since Oswald took it. And again, pure logic tells you if no one can recreate that shot, surely there must be another shooter because no one's been able to do it. There's only one problem with that theory. It's been recreated over and over and over again. CBS News alone had 11 different sharpshooters make the shot. Oliver Stone today says, oh yeah, you know, I, I, he calls his movie a counter myth. And he, he mixed facts and fiction purposely. I'm like, what? Because 20 million ticket buyers and millions of people who watch it on cable all the time this is the official record of JFK, but it's filled with things that you just made up. And to me, that's where I think we get distracted. I think we, so getting back to your question, uh, what do I believe? I believe that if we want to know what happened, I think Lee Harvey Oswald shot this guy. If we want to know, did he have help? We'll never know because a guy named Jack Ruby pulled the trigger and took Oswald away from us. And in that moment, he took any hope of finding out the real truth. And that's the real shame. The 
section where you talk about UFOs, it is interesting the way the government handles this. And you walk away feeling sorry for the people who report them because their lives are turned upside down too because people think they're nuts. Well, the fun part that we did with UFOs is um, it's easy to find a crazy person to talk about UFOs, right? They'll yeah. look at you, they'll blink a lot. You find them in a cornfield, they'll say they were abducted. That's great. Um, you know who saw a UFO? Ronald Reagan. You know who else saw one? Jimmy Carter. Now I'm interested. Now yeah. I'm listening, right? These guys are not crazy people who are in the cornfield. And to me, what I love is we found the, you know, the government during the, obviously that time period in the 50s, you stop trying to study and figure out in the 60s, what is a UFO? What are people seeing? What are they reporting? They did Project Blue Book, which studied it. What we put in the book is when you read that government forum that the government used to send out if you saw a UFO, it's, it's like a time capsule. It'll literally say, Mark, did your UFO have blinking lights? Check yes, check no. Was your UFO flying with another one? Check yes, check no. If it was flying with three, is it a triangular pattern? Check yes, check no. And I love, if we think our government is wasting time now with lots of things, um, you know, and having problems, I love that there was some group in the government that whose sole job was to figure out, you know, what people were seeing. And to me, that's the fun part of history because all, you know, don't forget every conspiracy is just a reflection of what we're afraid of. That's what, every, that's what every conspiracy is. And you show me a conspiracy, I'll show you who you are, and I'll show you what you're afraid of. And when it came to UFOs, it was a time when obviously the Cold War was, uh, was needless to say, making everyone crazy about someone encroaching and taking over America, coming from outside, and no surprise that that's when we started seeing more UFOs than ever before. Brad, help me with this one. There is no gold in Fort Knox, is there? One of my favorite ones in there. That's a number three conspiracy we put down there. The last time anyone saw the gold in Fort Knox was 1974. Why doesn't the president just go and be done with this? And there's the question, right? That's the, there is the heart of the question. So I got asked to speak at Fort Knox. I went to Fort Knox. Have you seen it? And no, I, I thought we were actually gonna get in. The, the amazing part was, is the colonel that was there became a great friend, nice guy, and said, we're gonna get you in there. And they, the military said it was fine, they didn't care. It was the treasury department came in and said, you're not getting in. And it begs the question, if it's there, why not, you know, send Geraldo in, right? Do, do the whole thing, put him with a camera, put him down there, show the gold and be done with it. We found the senator from Kentucky, Senator Huddleston. Okay, this is not some crazy guy. It's the senator from Kentucky where Fort Knox is, who was there in 1974, last time anyone saw the gold, he was there. And we said, is there any gold in Fort Knox? And he said, I don't know anymore. And we <laughs> said, if there's no gold, what would you do? And he said, probably run for the hills. And this is the senator from, so it begs the question, just as you just said, why not just open it up if it's there and show people what's in there? What I also love in the book is we show you what else is in Fort Knox and what the government has hidden there over the years. What else is there? Uh, I won't tell you all of it because I want to ruin it, but I will tell you this one is at times of great crisis, the Declaration of Independence had a hiding spot there. So did the U.S. Constitution because it was a safe place. And when they took them out of Washington, D.C., they put them in Fort Knox. Did they do this after 9-11? You know what? I, I don't know about 9-11. They did it certainly before that. I think um, in World War II, I think it was done. And I actually don't know about the 9-11 part. I do know that they redid the security in the National Archives after 9-11 for sure. I actually, in fact, have seen the contraption that they put in when it lowers. And um, it's, but I love the idea that this place, Fort Knox, is still this amazing warehouse for our treasures. Do you have anything in here about the bunker that supposedly where all the senators and Congress people go when the apocalypse happens? You know, the bunker actually, um, you know where they go, the first place they stop is the Library of Congress. That's actually the first place they stop. The bunker itself that you're talking of is, is below the White House. And that is, you know, and I can make up whatever I want. I write fiction for a living, right? I can say whatever I want. But if I tell you you're in the ground floor corridor, you make a left at the statue of FDR, you're going to be in a small room, this chair stacked to the ceiling. That's where they store the chairs for the state dinner. And then you're going to go out the back of that room, you'll smell flowers in the air. The White House flower shop is there. Go straight. The ceiling's going to lower down. You're going to see HVAC equipment above your head. When you get to the dead end, make a right-hand turn. You're going to see a metal door. That's the entrance to the bunker. That's the secret bunker, the, the bunker that's below the White House. And now it's real. And that's where Cheney was after 9-11, and that's where the president goes when he's in the White House. Isn't there a West Wing? They had the, the something distribution venue. It was like a small little room at they the do. bottom. Well, it's not only that. They, what they do is, the sad part is, is they have, um, when, when you're in that higher rung of the inner circle, you know, and you actually do a role play where if there's a disaster where you go, everyone doesn't fit in the bunker, needless right. to say, right? So there's places like Mount Weather. There's all these other places where uh, they make sure that if you're top staff, you know where to go. The scary thing to me is when you realize, wait a minute, I don't know where I'm going. You know what that means? 
he ain't top staff. Yeah. Hey, I, I do want to mention a book that, a couple of books that you've written in our previous talks that are still pieces of literature I treasure. The thing that you wrote about fathers and sons, those books. I appreciate uh, that. Gave yeah. those yeah. Heroes to my son and Heroes my daughter. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. And you did it for your own children. I did. I wanted to give my kids a book. Uh, I was really tired of my kids looking at reality TV show stars and athletes and saying that's a hero. I always say that's fame. That's very different than being a hero. So we did Heroes for My Son and Heroes for My Daughter filled with the stories of Abraham Lincoln, Mr. Rogers, Jim Henson, Rosa Parks, Amelia Earhart to show them the great moments of their lives, one page stories to just inspire them. And as a result of the success of those books, we're actually launching next month in January, I, uh, we're launching a line of children's nonfiction children's books. So we start with I Am Abraham Lincoln and I am Amelia Earhart, and we tell the real-life nonfiction stories of them as kids and as adults in picture book format to, again, inspire kids and remind them. I'm just, I feel like we need to remind them what a real hero is in America today. How is life in Florida now? Everything you do is here. Uh, everything I do is here. I've been very lucky. Uh, I love writing about Washington. I go back to Washington, but my family was in Florida, so we always come back to Florida. And um, for me, Florida is great because there's no crazier place in the universe. And as long as it stays crazy here, you always have something to write about. I obviously love the research in DC and I, and I still, of course, spend all my time at the National Archives. The National Archives for me is like going to the Playboy Mansion. Um, that's my Playboy Mansion is, is I get to go there and see things. And, and you know, one of the things that inspired this book is years ago, I was there in the National Archives, we were in the Treasure Vault. So it's one of these kind of hidden rooms where they store the best stuff. And they showed me, a document that was the oath of allegiance that the Revolutionary War soldiers had to sign when the army started. So the first one was signed by George Washington, kind of I'd solemnly swear that I will be loyal to this army. And he had number one, they had them all numbered. Number one was Washington, number two, three, four. And then they handed me, they showed me the one of a guy named Benedict Arnold. And Benedict Arnold is kind of like a curse word today. He's not even a real person anymore. But when you see this document that he signed, you imagine this man, Benedict Arnold, you see his handwriting on this document, and now, for sure, you know history is alive. It exists. And that's what we wanted to do with this book is, again, take that evidence, give it to people, let them take it out of the book, and bring history alive for another generation. Were you always a history buff from the time you were a youth? Uh, I was. I, my, this book was in 11th grade. My history teacher, Ellen Sherman, wheeled in a, a, a JFK conspiracy movie and showed it to us. I dedicated this book to her because she kind of really birthed my love of history in that moment. Um, but I've, I was a history major in college. I thought English was a really useless uh, major, but you know what? History will be even more useless, so I decided to choose that instead. I thought that would be the, the most useless of all, um, but it was what I loved. And Glenn Beck has recognized your work and featured you a few times on his program. Yeah, he's been a very, very dear friend. Um, very Actually, since, since the novels first came out, Glenn has been really supportive since he was back on CNN and um, obviously, you know, went with Adam Fox and, and have uh, been able to guest host the show when he was out. I mean, he's just been very supportive of the books, which is always greatly appreciated. And, and he's a real lover of history. His, you know, his goal is really um, to also find that history and bring history back to people because we know, you know, we, we tend to over time, we tend to tell stories as opposed to facts. Um, like we all do, we all right. I mean, if I from from what happened Saturday night to Sunday morning, by the time you tell a story, we're already embellishing in our own lives. How do we expect history to do any better? And I appreciate that he always really does try to go out there and and, uh, and find the real stuff. Before you go, and coming back to the the greatest conspiracies, like we did the last time, can you tell us a couple of conspiracies who didn't make the cut? You oh, had to yeah. boil it down. That's always the hardest thing for you is to boil it down to what you want, whether it's the heroes for your son or heroes for your daughter. There were people you had to leave out, and they, too, had almost hero designation. What about conspiracies that didn't make the cut? Yeah, no, uh, I appreciate that. The, the, the one that was on the cutting room floor, the number 11, if here's the top 10, number 11 that I wanted to do was Marilyn Monroe. I really wanted to do that story. It's just, an you know, here's this woman, um, you know, her mysterious death, but I felt like, at the end of the day, I didn't want to do two Kennedy stories. I knew I was doing JFK, and I didn't want to do another one. So we really tried to make it a, a mix of that. Um, and then there were there were plenty. Of, I mean, the, the the sad part is there's so much history that's out there that's unanswered. The death of Meriwether Lewis of Lewis and Clark is an amazing story. Thomas Jefferson used to write in secret code, one of the first presidential codes ever invented that he used to use while in office. George Washington used to use one before he was in office, but Jefferson used it while president. And, um, and his death is this amazing, mysterious story I would have loved to have done. We did it on the TV show on Decoded, but we just didn't have time to do in the book. 
Brad Melcher, back to visit with us. And may I wish you a happy Hanukkah here early for you and your family. And thank you so much for your friendship all these years. Always. And right back to you, Mark. I appreciate it. Brad Meltzer, our guest on the Bookmark program at Miami Book Fair. That's Bookmark for this week. If you have comments or thoughts on future authors, send an email to us at our website, bookmark.us. That's our broadcast for today. Thanks for watching.